Okay, our last speaker of the morning before our social mixer that Lauren will tell us more about when it comes up um, is Yuni Shen, um, who was going to be in person, but I think needs to be presenting from online. Are they Zoom host? Do you see see them? Okay. Um, can can people hear me? Yep, we can hear you, Yuni. Go ahead and share your slides when you're ready. Oh, no, you just got I'm on, so. I'm ready, sorry. <laughs> I have another talk before we're running late. Oh, no. No worries. <laughs> we were also running a little ahead of schedule, so it's totally fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Um, right. All right. So I'll start. All right, go ahead. Thank you for joining us. Yep, no worries. So my talk will be about developing statistical tools in ecology and astronomy using the help of high throughput computing. Um, I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but let me see. Um, so we're in a big data era for ecology and astronomy. Well, this looks very discreet. There, it seems not very, very close, but yes, we're in the era like both both areas are big data driven. Like I gave three examples that I, I worked with before. Like first, it was very local in Wisconsin. It's called Snapshot Wisconsin. is a camera trap data set um, or camera trap project. Basically, um, stakeholders or landowners, they can grab their own camera from DNR and put it out on their own property and then um, to capture how, uh, what, what animals they have. Then as a matter of number, we have like uh, a million camera trap photos, uh, 10 to the sixth um, camera trap photos. And the second, second data server, I would say, that I worked with is called MGRAST, is, uh, is a server for metagenomics. Uh, people, do an people do analysis there, and they upload their raw sequencing data of metagenomics. Um, <clears throat> As I said, it has 2,000 billion sequences um, in, in that server. And the third data set is an astronomy data set that I work with it is a space telescope called TESS, Transition Sur Transiting uh, Exoplanet Survey Satellite. So it basically takes photos of different stars and monitoring their brightness and to see if there is, if it has an, an exoplanet that go, go right before or right between that star and the earth so that you can see there is there is a um, there is a, a planet so like 10 to the 10 to six stars monitored for two or 20 minutes resolution for four years so all of those telling us that um, both ecology and astronomy are in a really big data era and then in the big data era, we are, we have ability to answer specific scientific questions. Like for instance, when you do camera trap, you can answer the question, how do species coexist? Like why the nature can have diversity? Like we have a lot of zero one data, basically whether animals appear in one of the specific site, something like that. And then in metagenomics, like the, the thing I specifically I work on is microbiomes. Like we, we, we're interested in how do microbiomes interact? Like it's, a, it's similar, similar to, to other species, but um, microbiomes is specific. It's special because we have a whole lot of data on microbiomes. It's easy to collect microbiome data. And then for astronomy, um, the question that I've worked on I've worked on is um, how do star flares? Star, base, star flare, basically the stars just randomly eject some other things to the space and become bright. And astronomers are really interested in how do they do that and how much energy they release. It is important to our humankind because if one day we're becoming interstellar species, then star flares can be harmful. They, they can be energetic and a large solar flare that basically the flare ejected by our sun can cause like for instance, uh, the telecommunication to be abrupted and it can cause problem to power, power grades and anything, a lot of things it can do. 
So understanding how other stars do this and understanding how our own sun do this is critical to us. So all of those um, scientific questions need us to answer and we have a whole lot of data, which simply means we need new tools to understand those data, to analyze those data, to understand, to give us insight to those scientific questions from those data. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. Like in my research, we develop statistical tools to understand the data and to give insight in scientific questions. Then a question always come is, if you develop a new method, how do you know it works? All right, that's where high throughput, high throughput computing come to play in my end is we do simulations. Suppose we can generate data and can our, can our method tell the right story that we use to generate the data? So basically we run simulations, we simulate data and use our new tools to analyze, quote unquote, analyze the data we simulate. And that, that requires a lot, a large amount of independent repeats. For instance, um, for instance, one setting in one simulation setting, we probably want to do 100 repeats. And we probably have like 10, 20, 100 different settings. Then we will need to run 100 times 100 independent repeats. And if we want something like a tenfold cross validation, then we times 10 to that. And they're all sort of independent. We don't require those simulations to communicate very much because uh, they don't share data set because they're just uh, independent repeats. And here is one example that we test five methods with 100 repeats um, each and on five different data generating process. So each of them, that this, this thing basically we require more than 10,000 jobs to do this. Um, it can now be run on my own laptop. If we run it one, in one computer in series, then that will, that will take forever and it's not good. So that's why we really need high throughput computing. And another, another uh, place that we need uh, high throughput computing, not only in the simulation, but in a real analysis. For instance, this is again, the task mission. <clears throat> As I said, it surveys like 10 to the sixth number of stars. And if we want to analyze all of those stars, then the only way we can do it is to run them in parallel because each data set are sort of independent. Then we basically summate a job for each star and we analyze those each star independently in at the same time in parallel. And I want to say high throughput computing or specifically for me, CHTC is a lifesaver for me. Like I learned it pretty late, surprisingly. Like I started my graduate study here at Urban Madison in 2018, but I didn't learn HTC until 2020. And I learned it from my advisor, like Claudia Solis Lemus and uh, Samir Dashpendi. Like they just come say, you wanna do simulations, you gotta try high throughput computing. And the most important initial learning resource is the CHTC's how to website. And as you can see, like I, I had a screenshot here and each time until now in 2022, and I'm pretty good at it, I still constantly go there and click HTC job for MATLAB Python R because I never remember how to build a package there. So each time I'll still go there. So my experience on first run on HTC with um, HT Condor is an R job with RCPP, which brings some complication because you, you need to make sure you can compile your RCPP package. And what I did is exactly just follow the instructions in how to's. First, I built R and I built my RCPP packages, which thank God is smooth. And then I run the simulation. And at that job, at the first time when I do it, I still remember I write a full for loop in it to repeat some of the actually independent jobs because I mean, I, 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 trans, I transit into high throughput computing 
from running all my job in serial in, in, in series. So I still actually have a for loop in it. And I want to say, if you want to run an R job in CHTC, just go there and that resource is very important. Then eventually I got better at parallelism, like how to break up jobs better. Like um, you can control things with input parameters. If you've ever tried to submit a job, actually you can, you can write your uh, executives in a way that require uh, that it takes some some common line input and by controlling those you can actually do a lot of things and you can also submit a series of jobs like just varying and varying the, the the one of the input parameters using queer remember something like that and also you can you can use your cluster id and some or something like that or your job id as random seed so that even if you want some of the jobs to have the same Data set you can you can manage to do that like you can easily make two jobs have same some random stuff and came from the controlling seed and sometimes running the ID can be helpful if you want to run six types of site of different jobs for hundred repeat and then you can submit six hundred jobs and floor the ID divide by hundred and that's a type identifier um, that's something I eventually learned and most importantly. It's a lesson I learned is to run tests. Um, it looks like a waste of time. Like you run like for instance, 10 jobs and just see if it works, but it will ultimately save your job, save your time. Because if you, for instance, you run thousand jobs and they just come to you as not useful, then probably you run a smaller job at the very beginning will ultimately save your time eventually. And here, um, there are some features that I really like about Ishii Condor. Is Condor Q is basically the query, and I really like to query all. Like I, then I get a sense of an overall throughput on the whole cluster. And then I really like to adjust priority after submit. And that's the thing I really like. And the automatic periodic remove is very helpful to remove some of the never ending jobs. And I really like Docker universe. It's mainly because my astronomy project is a, is a very painful. Um, it's, a, it's a project involving three different languages. I basically, I use R to call Stan and ask Stan to call an external C++ header I wrote. Um, so I need them to run at the same time. And the vanilla universe is just not very good at it. So a Docker universe is really helpful and Docker is really helpful. So one thing I really hope um, the CHTC's website has is a, um, a small tutorial on how we work with Docker Universe or probably just several hyperlinks to a tutorial on Docker itself. It's probably also be helpful like, um, so people can know that how, how to use Docker from when, when people first encounter the, the environment problem like me. And there are something I wish to have. First, as I said, it's a better starter get for Docker, Docker Universe as it is really useful. And then the second, I hope I missed it, but last, last couple of weeks, like we, we encountered the, the throughput problem because of maintenance. And I believe because of uh, NIFS, the newer IPS deadline is coming and the cluster is crowded. Um, I really hope there is an estimate of waiting time or just at least just, just how many higher priority jobs are in front of me that I'm waiting because I sometimes plan my writing or other things according to the simulation schedule. So I sometimes hope that should that can be there. After all, um, CHTC really saved me a lot of time and effort. Um, by running multiple jobs at the same time. And Docker and Vanilla, a lot of other universe um, options make me don't need to worry too much about, about um, configuring my environment, my computing environment, and that's really helpful. And I have to say that I don't use the full power of CHTC and HT Condor, because the, the thing I basically do is just uh, 
throw a bunch of jobs to a bunch of independent jobs to the cluster and, and run them independently and get results back and then post-processing on my own computer. So I'm, I'm not the person that got the full power of it. Um, I hope to explore more, but um, yeah, that's pretty much of my experience with CHTC. And this is a screenshot. When I made this slide is uh, May 16th, I believe. Um, that at that time I, I have like 8,000 jobs running on CHTC and probably still, still several thousand running now. All right, that's pretty much of my, of my presentation. And I'm happy to take questions. Thank you.